Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to LISP.js. We are really excited to have you all uh, in the building. Already seen uh, quite a few familiar faces, some new ones as well. Um, we're really excited as the LISP project to have uh, today a, a really focused day on development and research and to showcase what we've been working on, but also tell you guys a little bit about what's to come. So we have a pretty packed agenda. Uh, today we're going to have the workshops. Really excited to have the team from uh, LCU, or the LISC bike team more specifically, to be running their own workshop. Uh, and then we're going to have our team uh, run the LISC transporter workshop as well. Uh, so both of those are, are, are really exciting. Um, then we're going to have some evening presentations as well, so hopefully you can all stick around for that. Um, first of all, who here is already familiar with building with blockchain? Awesome. And how many already are familiar with LISC, the LISC project? Cool. Awesome. Okay. So uh, we're going to kick off with a video just outlining what blockchain is for those not so familiar. Uh, and then we're going to have two of our senior developers present more about LISC and the SDK more specifically. So we're going to kick off with this guy. Let me tell you a short story about a little fellow called Jacob. Since he could remember, Jacob always wanted to get a blue cat, but his parents were always finding ways to not get it for him. So, one Christmas, he figured out a way to finally get his dream pet. He would send his wish to Santa. Oh, how excited he was when he wrote the letter! But Jacob was too young to take the letter to the post office by himself. So the next morning, he had to ask his dad to do it for him. You could say that his dad was the middleman between Jacob and Santa. He never imagined that on his way to the post office, his dad would open the letter, read it, and replace the blue cat on the list with a brand new pair of socks. The letter was posted to the North Pole to Santa and the elves. When they received it, they started working right away, making Jacob's gift. So that year, Jacob received an adorable pair of socks. But next Christmas, Jacob decided to use the blockchain. Jacob wrote exactly the same letter, but instead of giving it to his mum or dad to deliver, he directly uploaded it to the North Pole blockchain. The North Pole blockchain is made up of a lot of computers connected to one another through the internet that all store a copy of everyone's Christmas list. The network is being monitored at the same time by all the elves, Santa himself, and even people like Jacob's parents. Every time a new letter is received, it is saved onto every individual computer, so everyone has the exact same copy. As the blockchain is an open network, everyone can see all the letters, even though it's impossible to know to whom each one belongs to. But when Jacob's parents saw that there was a letter asking for a blue cat, it wasn't hard for them to know that it was from Jacob. So, once again, they changed it, this time for a cookbook. But as every other node had a copy of Jacob's real letter, the change was spotted, and the computer trying to make the change was cut off from the network, meaning Jacob's real letter remained unchanged. So, guess what Jacob received that year for Christmas? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Maciej. I work in LISC for a while already. I'm here today to briefly introduce you to LISC SDK, our newest product that allows you to build blockchain applications in JavaScript. Uh, LISC started with a vision to bring the blockchain technology accessible. And LISC does it by creating the tools for developers, allowing them to build the blockchain applications and experiment with this uh, great new technology. LISC started more than three years ago already. And uh, LISC 
is secured by the delegated proof of stake uh, open participation system about to which we would like to introduce also later during this evening uh, some improvements about which of uh, Maxim and Iker will tell you in, in more details. Uh, LISC has its well-established position within the cryptocurrency industry already, and LISC aims to set the new standards of how do we create the decentralized applications, because what we see currently as a challenge within the overall blockchain industry is that the tools that already exist over there are just simply not good enough. That's why, as a primary focus of, of LISC SDK, we set ourselves to focus on the experience of a developer who would use our tools to build their own blockchain applications. Uh, and LISC SDK comes to developer as all-in-one toolbox that allows developers not only to start and uh, create their own custom blockchain applications in an easy way, but also guides developers through the whole maintenance uh, process of, uh, of maintaining the blockchain application because while designing LISC SDK tools, we tried to forge all of our experience we had by building the, the LISC mainnet network and uh, forge them to the way how the LISC SDK looks currently. Therefore, we provide with the QA tool set to assure that the solution we built is also working as expected. How to make the blockchain application, the blockchain, uh, blockchain matter, which is relatively uh, difficult to grasp at the very first moment, how to make it access as accessible as possible? Our answer is uh, we build it in JavaScript. And you can argue whether JavaScript is a secure language, whether it teaches you good patterns, but you cannot argue that the whole internet is built in JavaScript. Every developer I know personally can do JavaScript. Uh, the world is just using JavaScript. And we provide the whole application platform written in JavaScript, which, the, which runs on Node.js. So that's why if you're familiar with writing any kind of web application, debugging through it, the experience you have while building your blockchain application with LISC SDK would be very much similar. What's also important is that LISC SDK comes as a single NPM package. Uh, it's relatively easy to install, and it's relatively easy to run just by using these three lines of code. Uh, basic blockchain functionality that inherits all of the functionalities after the LISC mainnet network. Namely, every new blockchain application would already come with the, uh, with the functionalities of uh, balance transfers with additional securities on your accounts by forming accounts together in multi-signatures or registering a, a second passphrase on, on the accounts, but also with the functionalities to govern your own delegated proof of stake by registering new delegates and voting on the existing ones. With LISC SDK, we try to cover as much as possible the actual uh, blockchain complexity so that developers using LISC SDK don't have to necessarily have the deep knowledge of how does the accounts model work in detail, uh, what are the parameters of an elliptic curve, or how does the Byzantine fault tolerance work. Uh, we provide with LISC SDK all of these functionalities so that developers can focus on what's important to them, which is designing their new uh, custom logic, and we provide a way to do it by exposing a transaction interface, which can be uh, simplified to more or less these three steps. You want to prepare your data after you want to uh, validate it, and if everything goes successfully, you want to apply your transaction to, to the blockchain. And thank you very much. That was that about the introduction. How does the uh, custom transaction inter interface works in, uh, in details. Uh, Mikkel would uh, explain you. Thank you so much, guys. Hello, everyone. So I am Mikhail. 
I'll be your host for guiding you through the workshop about custom transactions. So first of all, Mache has showed you just the index.js index file, which is basically the start of your application. By default, this application comes with uh, four, uh, five, sorry, five transaction types that are natively supported by our uh, SDK. So for example, the first one is the transfer of funds, where you transfer funds from one address to another, and the user has to pay 0.1 disk as a fee. So every custom, every transaction you see here is actually a custom transaction. So we can take this logic, modify the logic, and register it again as a new custom transaction type in our application. So this brings us to the introduction of custom transactions. A custom transaction comes with a skeleton, and the skeleton starts by, exp by importing the base transaction. So the base transaction holds all the interfaces and all the logic you need for writing your first custom transaction. There are six functions which we need to implement in order to create a successful custom transaction. So we're gonna take a look at each of those functions. So the first function is the type. The type is used as a unique identifier of your custom transaction in your blockchain application. So for example, in this case, we assign number 23 as the unique identifier of our custom transaction our application. Next up, we have a, a fee function. The fee function is used to tell the user how much he should pay for sending the transaction to the network. In this case, it's free. So we say the user doesn't have to pay anything for sending the transaction. The validate asset function is an important function for performing only static validation. So for example, we want to make sure if the Recipient ID, recipient ID is present on our transaction object, or if it has the right type, a string. If this is not the case, we can push an error into the errors array, and when the transaction gets compiled, the transaction pool will see, oh, there are errors, and the transaction will be discarded. So, then we have the prepare function. This is actually the most important function in our custom transaction because it allows us to cache the data we need later on for applying the changes to our blockchain. So we can say here, I want to cache the recipient or the sender ID, so it's, we're going to cache the sender his account. We can use the sender account later on to, for example, to, um, deduct a balance or deduct a fee from his account. Um, why do we use this way of dealing with data? We can also work directly on the blockchain. So the reason for this is we want to create a snapshot of our blockchain state so we can later on work on the state and return the state back to our blockchain. If you would directly work on top of your blockchain state, things might change on the way and your transaction might turn out invalid. So now we have come to the apply and undo function. So the apply asset function is used for telling your blockchain how to make the changes to your blockchain state. So for example, we have an account and we might want to make some changes and the account state contains an asset field which contains a num field. And as a first step, we want to increase the num field. So we say plus plus and the num field will become one. Next, we want to add another property, my name. So we add a property name on the asset object and we set it equal to my name. But why do we need the undo asset function? So for example, a fork happens and we are on, on chain with a tip A and we have to roll back a few blocks to a common point. In order to roll, do this rollback, the blockchain needs to know how to undo the changes we have prior done. So that's why we need the undo asset function where we will do the num minus minus where we decrease the num field again and then we delete the name property from the asset object. If we take into account the changes we do here, we will end up again with the same state which we have here. So this is a healthy custom transaction where you can apply changes and undo again. So we end up with the same state. So we have our custom transaction and we want to register it now to our blockchain. What we can do is we import the custom transaction and we can use the exposed interface register transaction to register the, the custom transaction to your application. 
When doing this, your blockchain will have all the business logic for accepting, validating your custom transaction and you're good to go. So the workshop where you have come for, we will be using Node.js, we will be using Postgres and Redis is optional, it's a dependency we won't need for now. We will be working on this bike workshop and we also have our SDK workshop. During the SDK workshop, we'll be doing uh, the concept of list transport. So for example, we have a sender and he wants to ship some cat food. But the sender doesn't trust the carrier, so he decides to add an IoT device which can detect light to his package. Whenever the package gets opened, a light alarm transaction will be fired saying like, hey, someone looked into your package, maybe something has been stolen. So the first transaction type we will be implementing during the workshop is the registration of the packet with the IoT device. Next up, a carrier comes to the sender's address and he picks up the packet and he creates a second transaction which is a start transport. The carrier is maybe a malicious person and he decides to steal the cat food. The cat food gets stolen but ha, ah, the sender implemented an IoT device and a light alarm transaction will be fired. So the carrier arrives at the receiver, the receiver sees on his mobile device that the package has been opened and he can decide if it's a success or a failure, if the cat food is there or not. And that will be the last transaction type, which is the completion of the transport. So what will the workshop be? It's a self-guided explanatory guide. You can read through all the steps. Um, you will be working with an IoT device. There, is, there are four custom transactions you have to implement and there is a client site explorer where you can use to explore the custom transactions you send to the network. So to get started, the persons for, who, want, who have signed up for the list back workshop can go to the stage there downstairs and the people who want to participate in the SDK workshop, so the list uh, transport concept, should go to the second floor on the left for you guys. Thank you.